Copernicus was released in Houdini 20.5 and in Houdini 21, it got a big upgrade, but I think people misunderstand what it is. So let's discuss what Copernicus is and how we can use it. So Copernicus is available as a copnet. This is the new copnet. So we can drop this down basically anywhere in Houdini. So let's start, just drop it down and dive inside. So a lot of people think of Copernicus or COPS, this new COPS, as being a 2D like part of Houdini. So that comes from a lot of these things like this fractal noise, for example, that when you drop it down, it looks like a 2D image. And essentially, that is kind of what it is. But Copernicus isn't limited to just this 2D space. It's not limited to this you know, two by two square. And it's not just a 2D system. Yes, it can work on 2D systems, but it's also just a fully 3D interactive you know, part of Houdini. It's able to work upon any geometry that Houdini, you know, works with. And in Houdini 21, it can work on things like volumes as well. So let's start off with just this noise section and what this noise kind of is, or like what this, sorry, not noise, but this image really is. What you're seeing right here is not actually an image. This is actually a 2D height field. And we can see this. If we drop down to stop geometry, I'm also going to just drop down a null here and just wire in our fractal noise. So we'll call this out, and for just the sake of this, we'll call it image. So let's jump inside the SOP geometry, and then we can drop down a cop net. We could also do this in a SOP create, or a, I'm in the stage context, I like to work in the stage context. But you can do this inside of the geometry context as well. So let's check this use external cop, and then I'm gonna press this little button right here, and we're gonna select that out image. And what you see here is essentially the same thing that we had right here, because it basically is. This is just a 2D height field. And if we look at their node information here, you can see we have one volume here with a resolution of 1024 by 1024. So we can take this and we can drop down a primitive properties and we can come to this volumes. Let's actually, before we do this, come to this cop net. Let's set this to the ZX plane so that it's more in the vein of like a height field. And we can come to this and select this adjust visualization. And we can select height field. And just like that, we have a height field. If I look here, you see that we have this layer that's called noise. If we want to have it more like a height field, we can drop down a name node. And we can just call this height. And now if we look at our primitive properties, we can see that we have this height with this little kind of like landscape icon next to it. And if we drop down a height field node and we look at this, you see that we have that same thing. It's going to be this volume. And let's actually come up here and set this to by, si uh, by axis instead of by size. And let's set this to be a 1024 grid sample. And now if we look at our properties here. You see we have the exact same thing that we have with this as well. So with our height here, it's just a volume primitive named height with a resolution of 1024. With our height field here, it's the exact same thing. So essentially what you're working on inside of COPS is not a 2D image, but just a height field that's kind of looking like an image. Now I can type in file and drop down a file node and we can wire that into our null there and if i look here we get the same sort of thing here so it's going to be again just a it's going to be a volume this one's going to be called color and this one the resolution has changed because the resolution of our input image has changed as well and we can just make this a rgb to mono And if we jump back into our soft geometry here and we look at our primitive properties, now you can see this is being displayed more as a height field again because it's expecting a mono channel, not a vector. So that is kind of what you're working with when you're working on like 
what we would describe as images. They're not really images. They're going to be a 2D height field. But like I said, we can also work on geometry and we can work on a volume as well. Let's look at geometry real quick. So again, we have a SOP geometry that we can drop down and I can drop down a pig head here. And you can see that we have our pig head being brought in here. Now I can do a couple of different things here. I can rasterize the geometry. So I can take this and let's add an attribute called UV because we have UVs on these. And now if I look at this and I view our UV space, you can see that we have our UVs there. Then we can take a texture sample and we can wire our UVs into that. And I can take a, another fractal noise if I wanted to, followed by a ramp mono. And let's wire this into our position instead. Or sorry, not a ramp mono, but a ramp RGB to get some color on this. Wire that into our position. And I can change this to be like plasma or something. And maybe let's play with the center of this and increase our amplitude. So now we have this that we can then wire into our texture that we can use as our view for our object here. But this is, again, this is being rasterized down to a image or a you know 2D volume being displayed to what looks to us as an image. So for all intents and purposes, we're gonna call this an image. And then we can drop down a transform a transform 3D and we can take this and we can totally transform this in 3D space. So I can rotate this around. I can, you know, scale it up or down. And what we're getting here is we're taking a 3D object and we're texturing that. So we could bring in the textures of this um, pig head if we wanted to, or any model and we can apply them onto our object here and we can work kind of in this like hybrid 3D, 2D area, right? So we have this 3D object, but we're also rasterizing this down to a 2D image plane. So we can, you know, put objects into our scene this way and we can do similar stuff with Pyro. So there's a few Pyro recipes that come with us, the Houdini 21. So let's do this Pyro configure fire. I can drop this down and this is going to allow us to work in a fully 3D simulation, but using nodes that are familiar to this 2D type of, of workflow. So, and actually this one's maybe not the best example for that. So let's drop down the pyro billowy smoke. This one's a, a decent one for exemplifying that. So we have this heart down here. It's kind of hard to see. Let's go ahead and press D and get rid of our grid and change our background to dark. And now we can see that we have this heart here. If I press play, you see that we have this smoke simulation that's going to play. Now, if I rotate around here, you see that this is in a 2D image plane here. And that's because we are rasterizing this volume down to this 2D image plane. But if I jump back to this pyro block end here, we have a fully 3D volume here and we can up the resolution and stuff with this as well so if i wanted to i could change this to be 300 and if i press play we get a much higher resolution um, volume here so we could actually take this and we can export this out to our you know normal sops or, or whatever and work on it there we can render this as a fully 3d volume we don't have to render this out as this 2D visualization. That's essentially all this is, is rasterizing this down. It's faking some rendering. It's giving it a light here that we're then rasterizing into our volume, into this image plane. And it's going to appear as a fully, you know, 3D volume in our scene, even though it's being rasterized down to that 2D plane. So I just wanted to kind of touch on the fact that yes, COPS is a 2D kind of image workspace, and that's what it was in the past. But with COP, the, you know, the new Copernicus, it is more than just that. It's not just limited to the 2D 
you know, space. It's not just images that you're working over. It is actually going to be a fully 3D environment. And again, we can also come back to like this, um, this image right here. And I've made this node called image two points. This is part of who mats, which is available on Gumroad if you want to grab it. But essentially all this is, is just going to take this image or whatever image we give it, and it's going to convert it to points. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that we now have some points here. And I have a whole bunch of points that are down here that are here in our scene. So we can take this and we can work over this as well. So we can do things with OpenCL. So if I drop down an OpenCL node, by default, we're going to be working over layers, which is essentially like a mono channel or something like that. And we can also work over geometry. So we have the ability to run over our first writable layer, which in this case is like the source input. Or we can write over our attributes, which would be like working over points. We can also write over volumes and VDBs. So there's different things that we can work over. And we need to recognize that when you're working in Copernicus, yes, we use a lot of nodes that are going to be familiar to like a 2D, you know, image manipulation suite, but it's also fully 3D. So you don't have to stick in this 2D environment. It's also going to be able to work in that fully 3D environment, especially in 21 with this, the volumes, this has really um, exemplified that the best, I would say. And I don't want people to be confused with what Copernicus is because I get a lot of questions about how do you work in Copernicus? Like, is it 2D? Is it, you know, 2.5D? What is it? It's, it's a fully 3D environment, but you're working on volumes for the most part a 2D height field to visualize what you're seeing here. And that's for most things, except for when you start to work on pyro, then you're going to start working into that 3D, fully 3D space. Or if you're doing something um, like you're importing your geometry, like I said, this comes in as 3D geometry, and then we can move this around in 3D space however we want. I can come back to this and I can transform this around and move it around. It's just, this is essentially taking a 2D view of this uh, two by two area of our, our viewport. So anything that falls within that space is going to be, going to be rendered by anything that's working on um, like that 2D plane. So those kind of rasterization techniques that like what we're seeing here with their rasterized volumes. And as we start to get outside of the bounds of this two by two square, then it's no longer going to rasterize um, something that is not visible to, to that area. And if I press play, we should see that cut off here. Once it gets above that, that certain spot, there we go. We see it start to cut off there at the top of the pyro. Even though if we come back to this block end, well, our bounds, I guess, are set there. Um, but at least I think the bounds are set. Yeah, so we have clip. So if I turn off this clip, um, max Y, and I replay that, this is just an optimization thing. Let's go back to this rasterized volume so we can see when that starts to go past that. There we go. We see that now clipping on the top. And if I go back to this, our volumes are actually going past that you can see kind of a little bit going past that so i wanted to point that out and i want to just clear up any confusion for anybody um, if you have questions feel free to ask i've been working a lot inside of copernicus and i'm really really enjoying it um, so feel free to ask some questions and i'll be covering more things on copernicus as we move through into the future as well so anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day